Okay, this is the Drunk Bobby Presents. This is my fourth or fifth. I have three empty bottles sitting here of this triple. And this is my fourth that I'm pouring. I wanted to talk about Google Plus comments. And I know that people don't like it, but I'm going to run through some goods and bads and some middle mixed bag typey stuff. I'm going to try to put comments in the description uh, about the times that I end up on these things, so that if you only want to listen to the bad stuff that I have to say about it, you can skip straight to it, um, <laughs> because uh, this may be long. I recorded a video with all my like nice equipment, and it ended up being 45 minutes of video. Uh, some of it was like dead time where I was trying to think of stuff, but this is how it is. So I'm going to try and run through this as fast as possible. I'll try and make it not as boring as you can, but it may be long, so deal with that. We're going to go through the good stuff first. Good stuff. No comment length. The old comment system, 500 characters was the maximum we could, uh, and that's just not good for conversation. Like, I, you know, so I would make comments on videos, like, that were 30, like 3,000 characters, which is not that much, ultimately. I mean, it's, it's pretty small. 3,000 words is a lot, but 3,000 characters is really not that much. So, um, you know, I'd have to make six different comments to make that comment the one thought that I was trying to make. Pain in the ass. Huge pain in the ass. Not... It was never in order, you know, it was always out of order, and some people would be, especially if it was a popular video, you'd, your comment would be broken up by other people's comments, unless you put the sort by thread, which was only available on the, on the, the strictly comment page. It was, it was a huge pain in the ass. 500 comments, 500 uh, characters per comment was a, a stupid, arbitrary number they instilled way back in the day. Um, not conducive to good conversation. Great for, you know, the the majority, the, the comments on, you know, popular or viral videos where people are just like, oh yeah, this is great. Um, but, you know, when people started doing educational videos or videos like Dan Brown's or mine, which wanted to do lots of conversation, it just, it, it wasn't a system that worked. It just it ended up being, a, you know, not enough at all. So 500 characters, not enough. I'm glad they got rid of it. We'll talk about more about the mixed bag version of that later, but that's th that's that. Um, good comments go to G plus to Google plus um, for further discussion. So there are some people that only use Google plus. They're not actually YouTube users. Um, this has a mixed bag version, which we'll talk about later. But uh, but what happens is if somebody has circled you on Google+, and they don't use YouTube, or they're not subscribed to the same people that you are, they won't see, unless, before this change, before this link, they wouldn't have seen your comments on YouTube. So, um, you know, if I comment on a video, like PBS Idea Channel, and somebody isn't subscribed to that channel, or SciShow, or whatever, any any of the channels that I'm... I'm subscribed to, like, 350 channels. Any of the channels that I'm subscribed to, if I comment on that and I share it to Google+, and somebody that only uses Google+, or uses it more than they use YouTube, um, they're going to see that comment, and they're going to interact, and they might watch the video and then get invested in, in YouTube. I think this is getting to what my last point is, which is discovery, but... You know, so somebody on Google Plus sees your comment and they say, oh, well, that's, that's super awesome, that's super great. So, you know, they then watch the video and subscribe or comment or just interact, or they see, you know, that enough people are subscribed to something that they want to interact with that person or they want to be involved in that community, and they do. I think this is a huge plus. Um, uh, so bold, <laughs> I've, I've written a little myself a little list here. Bold italics, comments, and or in comments and stri uh, bold italics strike through in comments. Uh, I think this is good. It's like icing on the cake ultimately, but it's it's good because 
I think that it adds to understanding. I think that people um, use in other mediums, like you know, uh, blogs and, and other places, they use these forms of communication to sort of make their point. So you know, if you have a bold or italic or strike through or underlined, which I don't think is supported by Google Plus yet, but if you have these sort of text indicators, <coughs> it, it makes a point. And it makes it makes conversation easier because you can express something clearer. So sarcasm and uh, why did I say it that way? Sarcasm and and other things are, are easier to understand. And quoting as well. So if you're quoting another person, you can sort of delineate that as a, a little bit easier. I think it's better. I think it's good. Uh, the bigger one, the biggest one, I think possibly in the comment section is editable comments. So I'm able to edit my comments. Um, hold on, I'm writing my <laughs> writing my notes for when I put the the description. Editable comments are great. Um, it, you know, a big problem I think that has happened in YouTube is that I would get when I when I you know got emails, which I don't get anymore. We'll talk about that. Um, I get a couple of emails where somebody had made a typo in it in, in a comment and they deleted it and then made the same comment but with the typo fixed. So we all know that the internet is full of these grammar Nazi type people and you don't want to leave a comment that has a, a grammar or a spelling mistake because your comment, even though it could be very articulate and make a good point, if it has a grammar or spelling mistake, your point gets completely ignored in favor of the grammar or, or spelling mistake. This is a problem that I'm glad that editable comments is fixing. So I, I think it's good. Ultimately I think it's, it's great. Um, <laughs> another big, big good for me, and I don't think it's been discussed or even officially announced as a feature, is that um, discussions in the comments of a video now influence the recommendations on the what to watch page. Now, we won't get into the <laughs> the drama or the politics of the what to watch page because it's it's not good. The subscription page should clearly be the one that gets preference, right? We all know this and we've talked about this for a long time. Subscriptions are the way to go on YouTube. If I subscribe to somebody, I should get their feed 100% of the time, every time they upload a video, no matter what. But that's not happening. Why it's not happening, I don't know. I, I really honestly can't figure it out. But um, it, it is happening. So if you subscribe to somebody, you don't necessarily 100% of the time get their videos. And a lot of people are still using the what to watch page. They're getting those recommendations from YouTube and they're they're interacting with them. Otherwise YouTube would not keep this around. Maybe they the conspiracy theorists will definitely tell you that they will they will do whatever they whatever it takes to to get their um to get their agenda across. But in my view, if it doesn't work, YouTube is going to change it eventually. Maybe not immediately, but eventually they're going to change it, like this comment system change that they just recently put out. The comment system has been broken since the day it was released, in my opinion. I mean, really, like, for a long time, the comment system has not been as good as it could be. It's still not as good as it could be, but it is much better than it was before, which is a plus, in my opinion. So, uh, I've said before that I think that YouTube should go to a, a Reddit style comments where it's completely threaded. Every you know response gets its, it's a new little you know indent and you, you see exactly what people are responding to in the comments itself. I think it would be a much better system. But it's not the system that we have so we have to deal with what we got. Before there was a quote beta version of a threaded comments which clearly YouTube had been working on internally and didn't work out obviously. Would I have preferred that they had continued that venture and figured out how to make comments threaded? Absolutely, but it didn't work out that way. But, so that, 
<laughs> so the recommended feed, I could, I could get back to this. The reason I'm making this point, the recommended feed is, um, so if I have a conversation with somebody and I'm not, say I'm not subscribed, or they're not subscribed to me, right? I, and this is something that has literally happened to me. It's anecdotal evidence. It's n there's no provable, like, YouTube has stated that this is a thing that happens, but it's it happens. I had a conversation with somebody about the comment system, um, because it's the new hot thing, co considering comments are only two weeks old. They commented on my stuff, which was a comment on a YouTube blog, it was long, huge comments, or a huge conversation where we went back and forth a bunch of times. I'm not subscribed to this person. This person was not subscribed to me. We just happened to have a long conversation in comments because he saw it on either Google Plus or on the YouTube blog. I don't remember exactly where he found me, but that's, that's what happened. What ultimately happened is that because he had this long conversation with me, my videos began to show up in his recommended feed, in his what to watch feed my videos showed up in there because my Google Plus and my YouTube account are connected and I was having conversations with him with that account, right? This, I think, is a huge plus for creators. I think it's enormously popular, but people don't know about it. It's not been officially announced. What happens now is the text comments and text conversations you have after your video is, is uploaded are now influencing the recommended videos that happen. So the the um, the creators that are most engaged in their comments section are going to get the most recommendations in the in the recommended feed, which is awesome. This is a huge plus for people, and it's going to drive discovery. So not only are you going to get recommended more in their feed, so they might see one video of yours that happens to kind of get some more like, you know, you get some, some interaction on your video and lots of people comment and, and interact and you are also commenting, interacting with those people, which is something we should all have been doing for a long time. But if you're in the comments and active, then your videos are going to show up more often in their feeds, they're going to watch more of your videos and therefore comment on more of your videos. This is going to drive views, which we all, excuse me, we all need because, you know, our revenue is driven by views. So if views go up, engagement goes up, and you're invested in that engagement, you're really going through it, this is going to be good. So on top of all that, I have I've used Google Plus for a long time. Basically since it was announced, I, I have tried to get a, an invite. As soon as I got an invite, I was in. I love Google Plus. I've been a huge fan for about a year and a half, maybe two years since it was it was launched. So I have, you know, 2,000 people that, are, that have put me in circles. I've put five or 600 people of my own that I know in circles. Lots of them are sort of influential people. They do good stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff that happens in Google+, by the way. You know, lots of pho the photography community was a huge part of Google+, especially in the beginning, because Google has this amazing... P the, anyway, we won't get into it. Google+, is a good, a good photography community including a bunch of other communities, tech communities, nerdy communities, you know, communities that, that some people have pointed out are fairly Google-centric. I get that. Um, but the thing is, so now when those people have connected their YouTube accounts, they'll make comments on videos, which some people subscribe to creators that don't have a huge audience. But when your comments are made public on Google+, they are so from these in, these very influential people will make comments on, on videos that are sort of small time creators, even though those creators are awesome. They're making awesome content, but they haven't been discovered, quote unquote, yet. It's bringing up discovery. So I'll watch a video because someone I know and trust has made a comment on the video. Now YouTube tried to do this a couple of years ago when they changed the home feed to be all kinds of activity. So they tried to make it, you know, likes and subscribes and, and comments and all that stuff. But all I want to see on, on the youtube.com slash home, whatever, is I want to see subscriptions. So that's what I've changed my feed to be. I've installed a Google Chrome uh, plugin that changes that link to be 
subscriptions, uploads only. That's all I want to see from people. I want to see their uploads. I don't want, I don't care about the comments they're making. I don't care about any of this stuff. But I'm using Google Plus as that feed because it feels like a social platform as opposed to the way YouTube has felt to me for a very long time is this sort of, you know, it's it's a place where I go to watch people and and so it's it's a change but it now it separates that feed for me. Maybe some other people don't feel that way, and that's fine. If you f if you use the the feed to get comments and and get recommendations for people, that's cool. But I just don't use it that way. But I'm using Google Plus in that kind of way. So if I see a if, if you know I have a bunch of people in my circles, and so if I see that five or six people have commented on us on the same video that I've never watched because I'm not subscribed to them then I will go watch the video and be like, clearly a lot of people that I know and trust are subscribed to this person. I need to go check this this content out. I think that's going to drive up discovery. I think it's going to drive up views on, on YouTube, which is our whole, you know, that's, that's how we make money. I think it's a good thing for creators. In addition to the, you know, the recommended feed, as long as you are interacting with people in your comments and you're, you're going to get recommended more often, I think it's going to drive up views and, and revenue. All these are good things. Let's talk about some of the bad things, right? This is, I don't need to write this down. 16 minutes, I start talking about bad things. Bad things, huge, the biggest bad thing of all, the confusing sign up process. I think that Google Plus and Google in general made a huge mistake when they asked users for six months on YouTube if they wanted to connect their accounts to their Google Plus account. So you know, they kept asking, hey, do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? We didn't want to do it. A lot of people didn't want to do it. I already did it because I already had a Google Plus account. I liked Google Plus. I thought it was a cool platform. In fact, I announced at one point that I was going to delete my Facebook account in favor of Google Plus because at the same time that Google that I got my Google Plus invite, Facebook changed their algorithm to the um, to only favor so that you could only have uh, top uh, posts. You couldn't get it in chronological order. So I got super pissed. I made a video about it. I'll link it somewhere. Um, that you know they were only serving me algorithmically in involved posts. So I was I was going to delete and I in fact closed my YouTube or my Facebook account uh, for a little while. And then Facebook announced they were going to allow you to sort it chronologically. You could get it all, whatever, and it would be fine. Okay, fine. So it came back to Facebook. But ultimately, I still don't like Facebook, especially since I took, I took like a month and a half off. Not, fan of, not a fan of Facebook. So, um, but <laughs> the thing is that the connection, I don't know what, I don't know how I got on Facebook, but the connection... The, the connecting your YouTube and, and Google Plus accounts is a really confusing process. It's not as clear as it could be, and it's certainly not as clear as, as most of us would like it to be. I want it to be like a one-click process. I have a thing, or I don't have a thing, and it connects it. Um, some people want to keep their anonymity on YouTube. It's fine. I think it's silly, but fine. You want to you keep a username, cool. But, um, <laughs> but ultimately, keeping the username is hard to do because it's confusing as to what you need to do to do that. So you create a page, or you already have a page, and you connect it to the page, and then, and then when you sign into YouTube with your Google account, you have to switch to the page, and I don't know even how to make that the default. It's it's not a clear process. Google should have made it more clear, and they didn't. Big mistake on their part. The bigger mistake is asking us for six months if we want to connect as if we had a choice. What they should have said is, hey, by the way, November 7th of 2013, we are going to require you to connect your accounts to Google Plus in order to make a comment. If you do not do that, you will, not lo you will no longer be able to make a comment. If you do it now, you'll get more familiar. This is what I think Google should have done. They should have told us instead of asking us. They didn't do that. Mistake. Perfect. Okay, great. Comment lengths. 
this is a bad and it's a good. It's sort of a mixed bag. Because comment links have been eliminated, there's been a lot of spammers that are posting huge, um, huge comments with super spam. Hold on, writing writing some notes so I can leave you in in the description. Um, uh, choice. I'll write that. Um, so because Google has eliminated the comment lengths uh, on comments, the 500 character that they had before, people are leaving, the spammers are coming in and leaving these enormous comments that are nothing but spam, either the lorem ipsum or, you know, whole copied scripts from Shakespeare, which are enormously long, or big ASCII art dicks or any of that kind of stuff. They're just, they're spamming us with hugely long comments, which on the desktop platform is not terribly pr problematic because the comments are collapsed, but on mobile platforms they're not collapsed. So if you're trying to read comments on you know your iPad or your iPhone or your Android phone or whatever, these comments are just taking up everything that you've got. This is a problem, and I think, but I know that Google is going to be changing this this problem very quickly. They're going to be fixing it. It's only been two weeks. Again. YouTube comments have been changed for two weeks. It feels like a long time because it's internet, but it's only been two weeks. So they're changing that, I'm sure. And if they don't, then I will be upset, but I'm sure that they're going to change it somehow. So at some point, the long ass comments are going to get changed somehow. In my opinion, they should be changed in two different ways. One, most of the comments that are that length, that people are just copying and pasting, will be reported as spam and they will automatically be filtered out. So the, the comment that's like blank, you know, blank nothing for 150 lines and then a big dick at the bottom or a swastika sticker or whatever, that's going to get reported as spam and th those won't be able to, to even be comments anymore. The second thing that I think is going to happen is I've seen recently on Google Plus that the, um, there's a, a thing at the end of the expand this comment or read more link that tells you how many lines are after the, you know, beneath the fold or whatever. So if you click the respond or the the expand link, you know that there's 500 new there's 500 more lines after your the you click that link. So if there you know if it seems like something and then it's nothing, you know that there's a, just a shitload of nothing. So you're not going to click expand the link. I also think that Google will figure out, because they're smart people, I've met lots of them, there are smart people there that will figure out that you can leave a collapsed comment link at the top, so if you click a trap, you know, like one of the trap expand links, you're going to figure out that there's way too much beneath you and you don't want to read all that shit or you don't want to scroll down for an hour and a half, and just click collapse comment at the top because it will stay there. This is an, a fairly easy fix, I know, because I've been a co I was a coder when that kind of thing was a thing, when expanding and collapsing comments and stuff was a, was a thing. It's a simple JavaScript fix. So I'm sure that Google will figure that out. They will fix that. <laughs> this video is 20 minutes long. Sorry. Uh, I, I've already talked about ASCII, the ASCII art spam. So people are commenting with dicks and swastikas and other spammy, the Bob guy, this, this Bob dude or whatever. Um, he's got a little tank and there's a little guy and his name is Bob and he's taking over YouTube, blah, 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 blah. I hate him. I, I, will, I will literally block you and report your comment as spam, hoping that your, com that your entire account gets shut down because you're a spammer if you post a, a Bob thing in my comments. I hate him. I think he's horrible. We're going to move on. ASCII art spam is a, is a huge problem. I report all the spammers, and I encourage you to do the same. It, it spam, it report anybody that, that posts ASCII art or some kind of ridiculous thing as spam, because that's the only way that the, the, the system gets fixed. It's the only way that the system improves is if we use the system and we report it and we do that whole thing. Uh, another bad, auto-posting to, to Google+. Absolutely. This is a bad I think that it there are some goods in it because, for instance, like I said before, discovery is encouraged when things are 
auto posted to Google Plus. So if I have somebody in my circles that is always posting his comments to Google Plus, that person becomes a little bit annoying, especially if they're a big commenter, but they also encourage me to discover people that I had not seen before. So I will go through my Google Plus feed, if I use Google Plus, and see comments for, on videos that I've never seen before from creators I've never even heard of. So it encourages some discovery. However, I think it should be optional. I think it should be an opt-in rather than an opt-out. So when you make a comment, it's automatically checked that you share it to Google Plus. This is a problem. Whatever. That's, that's, a, that's a problem. Some people have a problem with it. Big deal. The bigger problem I think there is that it's requiring a Google Plus account. Would I have preferred that YouTube had come up with some kind of system to improve the comments maybe three or four years ago before Google Plus had ever existed? Absolutely. I think YouTube has had a huge problem with comments for a long time and they had begun to do some work but when Google sort of said, hey, we're making this Google Plus thing, just, let's just hold off until we make that a thing. Then Google stopped working on the in-beta threaded comments and instead waited for Google Plus to become a, a bigger thing that they could incorporate. I get and I understand that... Hold on. Uh, yeah, I get and I understand that, that people feel forced into making Google Plus a thing. Um, you know, the the <laughs> the uh, the the mean girls joke of stop trying to make Google Plus a thing. It's not going to be a thing. Leslie talked about it in some of her videos. I've talked about it uh, in comments and, and threads and discussions about this whole integration. It's a stupid joke, but whatever. People love it. People feel tricked into making Google Plus a thing. They said for six months that they didn't want it to happen. They, it, there's this appearance of a choice. And it, um, hold on. Uh, choice. Sorry, I have to, re because I'm recording this live, I have to sort of uh, record the timestamps so I can give you guys some skippable moments. Um, so Google gave us the appearance of choice. So they said, hey, do you want to link your accounts? And we said no for six months. I didn't, but many people did. So they, they gave us this appearance of choice. And then all of a sudden they said, hey, by the way, it's no longer a choice. It would have been much more, I think, accepted had they said, on November 7th of 2013, you are no longer going to have a choice in this matter. You are going to have to connect your accounts in order to make comments. So a lot more people, I think, would have gotten on board. Yeah, they would have complained. Yes, they would have petitioned. Yes, they would have done all the things that they're doing now. But eventually they would have kind of given in because that's the inevitability of the internet. When change happens, you learn to live with it, right? So they would have given in, I think, a little bit to this change um, and and kind of moved on and learned to sort of incorporate Google Plus as a part of their life. But as it stands, it looked like a choice. It looked like we could say no for long enough and, and then eventually nothing would have happened. Or YouTube would have figured out something that would have happened with our YouTube accounts instead of having to incorporate this Google Plus thing. Totally a valid... Uh, problem or, or um, uh, complaint. I get it and I agree with it. Had, I wi ha had the world been perfect, I wish that YouTube would be its own platform and that Google wouldn't necessarily need us to incorporate all of these things. I think there are some excellent advantages to having Google Plus, excuse me, I'm burping, be a part of our YouTube experience. I think there are some advantages. I've kind of laid them out before. Um, the, the idea that mentioning people in your comments by the plus... Um, let's, let's write this down because I think this is important. 2930. Mentions. I think that mentioning people in your comments that you are circled in 
or that you have in your circles on Google Plus is a huge advantage on YouTube. So for instance, if I were not subscribed to someone that, that, was ha that had good conversations, so for instance, let's say I'm not subscribed to Dan Brown, right? I am, but if I weren't, and Dan Brown made a video that someone in my, that was subscribed to me thought, so they're subscribed to both me and Dan Brown. I'm not subscribed to Dan Brown, so I wouldn't see his video, but somebody is subscribed to both of us, and they comment on a video of Dan Brown's that is relevant to something that I've already talked about. They could mention me in the comment of the video, and I would get an I would get a a, a, um, a notification, right? So I'd get a little bell boom, that pops up and says, "Hey, you've been mentioned in a in a comment." And so I'd go over to the comment and I'd read their comment, and hopefully they would have said something like, "Hey, I think Robert Jones would be involved in this. I think he would be interested in what is." is being said, and I would then watch the video. This is a, a, the discovery thing I was talking about earlier. You can mention people, and they will come over and watch videos, or, or listen to your comments, or read your things, and it, the interaction is increased. This happens on Twitter a little bit, but again, we don't have a comment limit here, and we don't have a, a character limit, so it, it can get more in depth. I think it's more advantageous. Um, okay. Other things. Uh, so needing, yeah, needing comments in the first place. Needing G, G plus in the first place. I, I wish that they would have done it in house. I wish that YouTube could have done it without needing Google plus, without needing this convoluted sort of sign up process and linking process and all that stuff. It's confusing and it's hard and whatever. I get it. Absolutely, I agree. I wish that they have done it some other way, but they didn't. So we need to kind of move on and figure out how to make it for us. Mixed bag. Links and comments. This is the bigger one. I think that links in the comments... I'm, I'm writing again. Sorry. I think that having links in your comments is an, is an excellent thing, especially because they took away the video responses. <laughs> this is the thing that I'm still pissed off about. The fact that they took video responses away makes me very angry. But they took it away. There's nothing I can do clear. I've done what I can to make them change their mind about that. I made a, a big post on their blog, which is kind of blown up. People like it. I get like every single day I get another plus one or seven on that comment. Lots of people are responding to that comment. Lots of people agree with me that it was a mistake, right? Uh, that was one of my biggest videos the past six months. I got three or four thousand, or two or th two or three thousand video or views on the video. People disagree that video responses should have been taken away, but now you can link videos in your comments, so that's a plus. I also think that you know linking to Wikipedia or other sort of um, respected and and respectable sites is a plus for comments. So as an example, I commented on SciShow recently. They did a talk show about um, uh, with a weatherman. I don't remember. I think his name is Mark. So Hank and Mark uh, sat down. I don't think his name. I don't remember what his name was. I think it was Mark. But they, t they sat down. He was, a, he was a meteorologist in the, the Missoula area. Um, pretty famous. But he talked about the percentage chance of rain. So I made a comment about how I think that the percentage chance of rain is super misleading, and I've always thought it was misleading, and I, I kind of hate it, especially in Florida. So I live in Florida where the percentage of rain is always 40 or 50 percent. Like it's pretty much, especially if you live in, on the coastal areas of Florida or any of these sort of tropical areas, you, you pretty much live with a 50 percent chance of rain all the time. Um, but he talked about a... Anyway, there was a big discussion, and somebody linked me to the Wikipedia article about how that percentage chance is actually calculated. And I thought that was brilliant, because I never would have thought... I mean, perhaps I should have thought of it, but I wouldn't have, calcu I wouldn't have Googled how to calculate percentage chance, because it, it didn't, it wasn't that important to me. But because he linked it in the comment, I went and looked at it, and it made much more sense. Still left me with some desirables, but it made much more sense. So that made some sense. However, 
the mixed bag portion of the links and comments is the people who are using the, the, uh, the ability to make a link in the comment for spam, Trojan, and virus reasons. So I think Google should have been smart enough, because they have lots of smart people that work for them, they should have been smart enough to say, we don't want any link shorteners, no bit.ly or, you know, t.co or g goo.google, uh, any of the shorteners that, are, that exist, the tiny URLs, any of that stuff, they should have banned all of them. And, and instead, given us some kind of, um, given us some kind of other version of that that would that was through YouTube itself that we could then track the clicks and know how our stuff was anyway there, there's lots of sort of um, social media analyzer versions of uh, reasons to use those type of shorteners so you get to know what your click percentage is and how effective your comments are doing and blah 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 but I think that ultimately the 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 <laughs> the spammers are are having an ad they have much more of an advantageous relationship with those kind of things than we do right now because they're able to just post whatever the hell they want and it could be spam or it could be a, a virus or it could be a Trojan horse or you know a link to a, a terrible video on some kind of family friendly type content that we shouldn't have we shouldn't be allowed to do. So I think there should have been automatically banned any of those link shorteners. As it stands, I am going through my blacklist and making any of the shorteners that I find uh, bannable. So they, they just don't show up in my, in my comment feed. Um, because I think it's, it's something that should have been done already. Does that make it a bad system? No. I think it makes it a mixed bag because you c there, there isn't there is an advantage to being able to link someone to a co to content that you've already come in contact with that gives context to your comment but there are spammers that are abusing that system so abuse is always going to happen I think no matter what this is also why the lengths of comments that are unrestricted is a mixed bag because you know somebody's gonna make a comment that is a, a copy and paste of the entire script of Romeo and Juliet or Henry V, which is like five million characters long or whatever, and as a, as a result, we're going to get this massive kind of spam. So these two things are mixed bags for me. The, the last thing I want to talk about is this idea of astroturfing. So let me, let me make a comment here. 38. Astroturfing. <coughs> so this is the thing that I've been accused of because I am in favor of the new YouTube comment system because I was not in favor of the old one. But because I've been publicly in favor of it, so I've commented on any of the YouTube um, blog posts that have been shared about any kind of information that they've had about this sort of thing, the comment system or whatever, and I've commented somewhat positively, although to be fair, the the most recent conversation that I've been having a lot is on a comment which I said, you know, I talk a lot of crap about YouTube and YouTube's changes in reference to the, the video responses, which is ultimately the thing I'm still pissed off about. But, um, but I had a, a comment about how I think that this could be a positive change because I think, and I, obviously it's not been proven because this is still an experiment that has never happened on a... a a scale this large, I think that some spammers, some trolls, and some douchebags on the internet might think s might think for a second before making those troll comments. They might second guess themselves and think my my new now my real name is attached to this thing, and employers are looking up your real name on Google. They're they're finding these things. And they might think s they, they they might think twice about making these shitty comments on your videos. They might think twice about making these hur hurtful and hateful comments because it could affect their real lives. It could affect their employment opportunities and etc. That's the comment I made. I think it could be positive because of that. 
because of a lot of other reasons, but but somewhat because of that. And that became a long conversation. There's about 60 or 70 comments um, in the thread of that where people disagree with me. And I'm fine with you disagreeing with me, but the the thing about disagreeing with me is you have to disagree with relevant and germane conversation with me. So if you just, just if, if all you want to say is Google Plus is bad, blah, that doesn't help your conversation. That doesn't help me understand what your position is. Because if your position is just hateful and mean and negative, I'm not going to listen to you. And neither is Google. They don't give a shit about that. They know that people disagree with them because they're a huge corporation. But what they have to hear is people that disagree with them in a rational and useful way in order for them to make improvements that will help the, the changes they're make that they're making improve people's lives. Because th ultimately, I think that that's that's their goal. Because if their goal was to eliminate comments, they would have just done that like they did with video responses. But I think ultimately their goal is to improve stuff. And so we should be on board with that. I'm writing another note here because this is another point of conversation. There are a lot of YouTubers right now, and somewhat popular YouTubers, especially in the science YouTube community, Viheart, Minute Physics, CGP Grey, and, and several other educational um, content creators that are disabling the comment system on their YouTube videos. This I think is a problem because those <laughs> initially it's only been two weeks so initially the comment system it, it favored lots of bad stuff and a lot of things sort of bubbled up to the top that were negative and mean and hateful and yes all those things are terrible. I think that the YouTube comment system will improve eventually and will continue to get better. But if you choose not to participate, they can't use the data from your videos to improve the system. And you have, you know, those guys have some of the best communities in the world. And they have some of the most intelligent people watching them in the world. And so it's a shame that they've turned off the comment system because the people who are using would use those comment systems are being shut out from making the comment system better. Uh, so I think that that's a problem and I think that's something that, that I would hope that some of my friends who are in that community would look at and say he's right. Anyway, this video is 45 minutes long and it, this is exactly as how long as it was when I made the long sort of more professional quote unquote video. My point is I think the vi the comments are better and let's let's continue to make them better by using the comments that are available to us and sending the feedback and using, you know, intelligent conversational terms that will improve the system rather than just yelling at Google to change it back because changing it back is not an option and it's also a bad option at the very least, like it's just not a good, <laughs> it's not a good, uh, it's not a good suggestion because the old system sucked. So let's let's find ways to make it better and let's do that. So anyway, thanks for watching this long ass video. If you made it to the end, let me know because it's a long video. Thanks. Bye.